Well, Happy New Year's Eve, Freedom Family. It's Pastor Robert here with an unexpected surprise. Listen, we did not plan, nor did we expect to have a New Year's Eve service this year. And uh, I, I just felt led to give you all a word. I had a word that I wanted to share with you, something that I wanted to give you as you transition from 2021 into 2022. And uh, as I was looking over the news and I was looking over social media, I realized that many of the New Year's Eve services in our area have been canceled uh, because of the rise in the virus uh, and a spike in information about COVID again. And so uh, tonight, I, I just really felt led to give you a word. I felt led to give you uh, uh, something that you can go into 2022 with as the last few years have begun to uh, evoke some feelings, if you will. The last few years have begun to evoke some thoughts that have caused us to put ourselves in position where we don't we don't maximize what it is that God is trying to do in our lives. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, I, I want you to understand that after today, the expiration date on 2021 is up. It's over. 2021 is over. It has to go. It has to stay in the past. It cannot come into this new year. 2022, brand new year, brand new expression, brand new mercies, praise God, that happen every morning. But in 2022, there is something new that is happening. And I believe that there are some things that should be left in 2021. And one of those things is fear. And so if you're taking notes, I just want to have a few minutes of a talk with our family in going into 2022. And I want to talk from this subject, evicting fear, evicting fear. When my wife was working on her master's degree, she lived in a house that her parents owned with two other women. There was my wife and these two other women who were roommates in this house. Her parents uh, owned the house, like I said, and my wife, uh, uh, she uh, rightfully so had the master bedroom in this house, but there were two other rooms where two other women lived in. Now, each one of these women at some point had a boyfriend. My, I was one of those boyfriends to my wife, and the other two women at some point had boyfriends. It was not uncommon that at some time, all of us would hang out at this particular house. I knew these women. They knew me. We knew their boyfriends. We would all hang out at the house. At one point, though, one of the women's boyfriends ended up moving in. He, he literally like brought his clothes, his toothbrushes, his, his, his belongings, and he moved in. I mean, he didn't sign on the lease. He did not have the permission of the owners. I know that for a fact. He just moved in. And, and here's the biggest problem. He moved in and he wasn't paying rent. I need you to get this. He's only there because this woman had invited him. She, she invites him in to the place, begins to allow him to live rent free. That means everybody else that's in the place is having to deal with this dude, him taking up resources, him taking up space, him being in the, in the vicinity. It means they have to be conscious of him at all times being there. And he's not even a rent paying person in the house. And the reality is he's only there. I need you to get this. He's an unwanted guest by the other people, but he's only there because this woman invited him. Can I say this to you? That fear is an unpaying guest in your life. That the fear has been invited, maybe by your trauma. Fear has been invited, maybe by the news. Fear has been invited, maybe by Omicron, Delta, or the COVID-19 virus. Fear is an uninvited guest that we have allowed to take up resources and residence in our lives. And the Lord told me to tell you that the expiration date on fear is 2021, December 31st. We are serving fear and eviction notice. I need you to get rid of your fear because your fears will invite other unwanted guests into your house. Fear will invite addiction into your house. Fear will invite unforgiveness into your house. Fear will invite bitterness into your house. Fear will invite uh, 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 levels of complacency into your house. In 2022, we want to get rid of fear so that we can have everything that God has called us to have. The, the, the word fear comes from a word 
phobia in the Greek or phobe in the Greek, and it has been attached to every kind of word and thing imaginable. You don't believe me? Uh, do, do this tonight uh, while you're hanging out at the house before the ball drops. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to Google, I want you to Google the most ridiculous fears. I want you to Google the most ridiculous fears. There, there are fears that range from a fear of clowns to a fear of spiders. There are fears that range from the fear of heights to the fear of insects. There are, there are fears that, that, that we possess. Maybe the fear of rejection. Maybe the fear of not being good enough. There are all kinds of Phobia. Some of them seem funny, but others of them are very serious. And the reality is there are some of us who have been living with serious fear all of our lives. There are some of us who have adopted some serious fears in this last season of our lives. But the Lord told me to tell you that it's time to eject and evict fear out of your life. Fear cannot come with me into 2022. Can I clean that up? Unhealthy, ungodly fear can't come with me into 2022. Why? Because 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, you know this verse, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. You, you got to get this, of power, of love, and of a sound mind. God says, I can give you a spirit of fear. And, and this spirit of fear that you have, that is an unhealthy fear of something other than me, is something that has been taking over your life. And here's what I need you to get. When the Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear, here's what he's literally saying, that there is a spirit of fear, watch this, that is actually a perversion of of your relationship with God. Don't miss it. There is a spirit of fear that is actually a perversion of your relationship with God. The Bible says, watch this, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I'm going to say it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Here's what the Bible is saying. There is a healthy fear, a fear, a reverence, a respect that we're supposed to have for God. But here's the problem. We have a perverted fear, a fear that takes the place of God, the only one that we should worship, the only one that we should reverence, the only one that should have our attention the way that we've are given our attention to everything else. There is a perversion of fear that has taken over our lives. And I believe that many of us have begun to live by this perverted version of a fear. Can, can I tell you what this perversion is a perversion of? I got several points here that I want to give you real quick, and we'll go out and celebrate the fact that fear is not coming into 2022. Here's the first thing. Fear is a perversion of praise. Write it down. Write it down. Fear is a perversion of praise. Why? Because fear causes me to reverence something else as greater than God. I need you to get it. Fear is a perversion of praise because it causes me to reverence or respect something else as greater than God. When I give God praise, when I give God the worship due his name, I acknowledge the fact that God is greater than everyone and everything in my life. The problem that I have with when we begin to fear things and we put it in front of God, we begin to acknowledge it as being greater than God. I'm more afraid of not getting the job than I am being a uh, reverence and in respect to Jehovah Jireh who is my provider. I'm more afraid of being rejected than I am accepted by the one who created and made me. I'm more afraid of being hurt than I am being uh, living and looking like the one who forgives and provides forgiveness. Fear is a perversion of praise. Our praise comes from the place of our lives where we give God our reverence and our respect. Watch this. Watch this. Fear is not only, watch this, fear is not only a perversion of praise, it is a perversion of power. It's a perversion of praise, but it's a perversion of power. Why? Because oftentimes when we fear something, we feel helpless against it. This is why the Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power. Watch. God says, when you praise me, you also understand that you were made in my image. When you worship me, that's the first thing you got to do. You got to praise God. Don't have this fear as a perversion of praise, but praise God. And once you praise God, you realize that you've got power. Jesus says, all authority has been given unto me. And here's what he says. I've delegated said authority to you. You've got power. 
power. You've got power over addiction. You've got power over rejection. You've got power over disease. You've got power over all of these things. You've got to understand that fear makes you feel helpless, and it's a perversion of the power that God has placed on the inside of you by his Holy Spirit. The Bible says you've got dunamis on the inside of you. Dunamis is the word for power. Dunamis is also the word where we get our word dynamite from. There is an explosion of power that God is waiting to erupt from the inside to the out of you. And in every bit of fear that you're living in is a perversion, listen to me, is a perversion of that power. Fear, fear is a perversion of praise. Fear is a perversion of power. Not only that, fear is a perversion of passion. Watch this. Fear is a perversion of passion. Uh, I, I'm a passionate person, and I realize that when I'm into something, I'm like into it. Like we were at, we were at uh, as a staff, we went on a staff and a leader's Christmas uh, fellowship, and we went to one of those axe throwing places. I took staff and the leaders, took them to this axe throwing place for a Christmas party, and we were hanging out at the axe throwing place, and uh, I got, I, I'm, I'm a little bit competitive, man, and so I get passionate about whatever I'm into. That's why when I'm up here, I'm preaching until I sweat. If I'm talking about basketball, football, or sports, I'm going to talk about it with passion. I'm, I'm into whatever I'm doing. I'm into it with passion. And I get, I get to, the, to, to, the, to the axe throwing place, and watch this. Uh, uh, we're throwing, and, and, and I start hitting the, hitting the bullseye. And I'm hitting the bullseye. I'm, I'm not bragging. This is facts. You got to ask, ask my people. I'm hitting the bullseye. I'm hitting the bullseye. And I'm competitive, so I want to keep hitting the bullseye. Then, then Marcus and I discover, watch this, that there's the bullseye, but there are these red dots on the outside. It is a little bit more difficult to hit the center of these red dots on the outside of the bullseye. So I start, I start to, to, to throw at the red dot on the upper left-hand corner of the target. I start to throw at it, and I'm hitting it, but it won't stick. I'm hitting it, but it won't stick. And here's the problem. Because I'm so passionate, I feel obligated to throw at this one spot until I get it. I feel obligated to throw in this one area until I get it. I'm so passionate that I'm stuck on this one thing. I can't focus on anything else. Everybody's eating and they having a good time and they laughing and joking and I'm so obligated to this one thing because of my passion that I'm throwing at it and that's all I'm doing. Can I talk to somebody who's so afraid of being broke that you're obligated now? Fear's got your passion on your job and not your family. You're so obligated now to not be hurt that you're, you're, you're obligated now to put your body in a place where you feel like you can be accepted. The people fear makes you feel obligated. Your passions have been misplaced because fear has you feeling obligated. Fear, fear makes you feel obligated to obey its command. If it tells you something, you got to do it. Why? Because you're afraid. It is a perversion of your praise, your power, and your passion. Fear is also a, per, a perversion of your progress. I need you to see this fear is a perversion of your praise, of your power, of your passion, but also your progress. Watch this. Fear paralyzes us and convinces us not to move forward. F fear tells me that if I go forward, I might step into the ditch. If I go backward, I might go back into the same thing that I came out of. If I go to the side, I might miss something. If I go to the left, I might do something. There is something in our culture called FOMO. It is the fear of missing out. And so what happens is we stay glued to social media, stuck, not making progress in the things God has called us to for fear of missing out. Fear is a perversion of your progress. You get stuck in a particular place because you have a fear and you don't want to move forward. Fear has paralyzed you. It's convinced you that you cannot move forward, that you cannot move into the things that God has promised you. Good fear, watch this, is protective. Bad fear is paralyzing. If, if I got good fear, I understand that I'm not going into a place that's danger. But bad fear is paralyzing. You got to understand the difference. I'm not saying be a fool. Talk to me, somebody. I, I'm not telling you to jump the gate at the Fort Worth Zoo and go play with the lions. Fool, you need to stand still. <laughs> good fear, good fear is protective. It tells you that the lions don't know the difference between you and the steak that they're supposed to be fed in the next 15 minutes. Good fear says that lion might take me out. Paralyzing fear, though, sees every person in your life like that lion. That way you can't have a relationship with anybody because your paralyzing fear has kept you from moving forward. There are some things I won't do because of my healthy fear, but there are other things I haven't done because of my unhealthy fear. Fear is a perversion of praise, is a perversion of power, is a perversion of passion, and a perversion of 
progress. So, so what do you want me to do, Pastor? Well, I've given you a little bit of research. I give you a little bit of revelation. Can I give you a little bit of relief? Here, here's what you need to do going into 22 about your fear. Number one, you need to pray for a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit. You, you need to pray for a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit. When you pray for a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit, here's what the Bible teaches me. There is boldness that comes upon you, and you don't live in fear. Acts chapter 4 and 31 teaches us that. Acts chapter 6 and verse 6 teaches us that. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 teaches us that, that when we have the Spirit of God, we don't live in fear. We, we don't live in fear. The second thing you need to do is you need to pray for a spiritual view of your circumstances. You need to pray for a spiritual view of your circumstances. The reason why you're afraid is because you're not seeing it correctly. When you begin to see things the way that God sees them, you see that the victory is already yours. You see that God is going to see you through. You see that the God that has always pulled for you is also pulling you through. You need to pray for a spiritual view of your circumstances. Number three, you need to pray that the love of God, watch this, flows to you and through you. you. You need to pray that the love of God flows to you and through you. Why do I say that? The first recorded instance of unhealthy fear in the Bible and in history is when Adam declares that he's afraid of God. When you understand that God loves you, perfect love, the Bible says, cast out fear. The Bible says that in, in, in 1 John chapter 4, and verse 18. What we got to understand is perfect love casts out fear. Well, what do we understand about perfect love? God is love. When you understand that the love of God is in you and it comes through you, you don't live in fear. So many of us are living in fear because we don't understand that the God of the universe, creator of heaven and earth, the one who determined my first and my last is for me, not against me. When I understand that kind of love, I don't live in fear. We fear when we misunderstand and misinterpret God's love for his people. He's a protector, not a predator. He's a protector, not a predator. Number four, we've got to pray for a submitted will. You need to pray for a submitted will. You pray for a fresh filling of the Spirit. You need to pray for a spiritual view of your circumstances. You need to pray that the love of God flows to you and through you. You need to pray for a submitted will. Jesus goes into the garden and he suffers from what, what many theologians call hematohydrosis. He's praying and he's so overwhelmed by the task and the assignment of crucifixion that he begins to sweat and the blood vessels on the inside of him begin to mix with his sweat glands. He begins to sweat drops of blood. Here's what begins to happen. Jesus is in the garden trying to figure out how he's going to fulfill this assignment and right as the anxiety gets ready to turn into fear, here's what happens. He submits his will to the Father and completes his assignment. When you submit your will to God, you understand that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hey, you prepare a table before me, even though it's in the presence of my enemies. Here's what God says. When you submit your will to his will, you can overcome and have relief for fear. Here it is. I need you to see this. That, 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 that Jesus wrestles with fear in the garden of Gethsemane because fear and sin both knew that once he died, they will be defeated. I'm going to say that again. Jesus wrestles with fear in the garden because fear and sin both know that once he dies, they will be defeated. Like Jesus, we have to learn to wrestle with our fears, hold on to our faith in order to defeat our flesh. And I'm telling you today that as you evict fear out of your life, you you can conquer and have the same victory that Jesus did when he came up out of the grave. I see you rising up into 2022 with all the power, authority delegated from Jesus into the life that he has for you. I see you fulfilling the mission, vision, and purpose that God has over your life. I need you to understand that Jesus went first. The Bible says that he is the firstborn among many brethren. If he wrestled with fear and came out of the grave, defeated the flesh, and now lives victoriously with all power in his hands. The Bible didn't say he was the only. The Bible says he was the first. That means what you're coming into is what Jesus has already given you. He's given you authority. He's given you power. He's given you love. He's given you a sound mind. He's given you what you need to overcome your fears. You can evict fear. It should no longer be there. Put the padlock on the door and tell fear you are no longer welcome in my home anymore. In 2022, fear, you can't come.
with me. I pray that you take this seriously, that you, you take this word, you apply it to your lives, that you, you rewind this video, and you, 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 you see the perversions of fear. I, I pray that you take the relief and you look at everything that you need to be praying for. And as you, as you apply it to your lives, I'm believing that God is going to give you, listen, God is going to give you victory over your fear, and you can evict fear out of your life. God bless you.